Hi you guys! Since my video last week on my fifth grade homeschool curriculum pick, I got several comments from you asking how, as a homeschool secular mom, do I use the good and the beautiful science? And one of you asked for a flip through and I thought that was a good idea. So this is a flip through. Let's see, what do I have? In order there, space, geology, health, weather, motion and simple machines, marine biology, and chemistry. Because there are so many, especially if I show you the first three that we actually did, because Morgan, I asked for her permission to show you guys her workbook or workbooks and she said yeah she's happy to have me um, film them. So once I do that with the first three I think you'll get an idea of what you're looking at any homeschool mom whether you're secular or not of what you're looking at with the good and the beautiful and why the little the shorter science units are incredibly helpful. Also the dog left because I accidentally dropped a book on him so he decided that this was not a place to nap for once. I don't have the dog here and you may not hear snoring. Let's start with space. That was what we did in the fourth grade at the very, very beginning. And we took these 15 lessons and turned it into every afternoon we did space and so we did at least two lessons an afternoon. We also didn't purchase these because I wasn't sure what to expect and we have a lot of other space readers so I didn't get those. There are many more to this but we've actually stopped cutting them out. Um, what you can do is put them on your wall and we I realized very soon that I was gonna have so many I was in fear of losing them so I just kept them. Okay here ladies if you are bothered by any kind of religion if you're a secular parent I had kind of cut out the portions that did reference religion and I feel really bad that I X'd it out. I didn't mean for that to be disrespectful in any way. But now in retrospect, it does help you see how very little there is. And this is for the parents. This is for the mom and the dad to read aloud to the kids. So you can go ahead and pre-read. And what I've done is highlight certain things and you can highlight the parts that you don't want to read. I found that there were very few and I quit outlining them because as I read along I could just skip over them with my eyes and Morgan also knows that while we don't ascribe to any particular religion we we're not in fear of having any religion come into our curriculum if it does then we just use it as a another point of study and I found that the good and the beautiful is really light in fact and there's another homeschool mom that referred to the good and the beautiful as Christian light. There's just not a lot of religion, but there is a lot of information for everyone. And they really do keep it as best they can as, as to the science or to the material. I can only speak to the ones that I have purchased and used. I think there might be, if you were to use this for ELA, there might be other things, for instance, where if you do... Um, dictation. There might be something from a scripture from the Bible. I'm not sure. Here are the workbooks. I bought two. I wasn't sure if we were going to use this again later on. So I just went ahead and, and got a blank one for when she's older. And we did the one for grades three through six. Morgan really liked it. And that kind of inspired me to continue on with the series with science. We did another one. Let's see, what do we do after this? We did geology and then health. And because they're, they're short and we could do two chapters a day and do a science unit in two weeks, I found that it was just enough of, of good concentrated subject matter in one science and then we were done and it worked out great. None of Morgan's workbooks seem to have any kind of bent or religious connotation in any one direction at all, it just focuses on science. And even if it had, it, we would have been fine to work through it. But I know that some of you moms had wanted me to do a flip through who are secular. Perhaps you're more strictly secular than we are. And that's really why I'm showing you this. We picked this up and I actually can't remember. I don't think they suggested it, but we found it and we really liked uh, reading it. I, I know a lot of people really enjoy the, the Who HQ and other types of books like that. And there's the Usborne. Um, I think this might have been a donation from my husband. Yes, this was his donation too. This is a good book. So we did a lot of extra stuff. We added on a lot of movies. This came from UND, Dr. Feberbeyer. She's the head of, the, um, of her division for space studies at UND. And when we came to visit her, she gave us this book from Morgan and it's, it's just really nice of her. She co-authored it. The second one I did, by this time I got smart <laughs> and realized 
I need to make sure I don't lose these little um, vocab cards and they're so fun. We did this every time we added a few more into each episode or each lesson. We would quiz each other for fun. And uh, why are these upside down? And as we did it every day and then added on, it was just really fun as a kind of a no pressure quiz. And the vocab related to the lesson that really helped us remember what we had done during the lesson before. This kit came with it. This was really sweet. You can add on, we went outside and added on a whole bunch of other rocks, but this is, these are the rocks that it came with and little tools to test the rocks for hardness or softness for luster and they use little they give you everything that you need to determine in your in your little experiments what you need to do and then this is for hardness i think oh it's for color so you can scratch that and then see what color so we'll keep this for quite a long time we did go ahead and buy these two books and that one as well and we we ended up even though morgan was in fourth grade or is in fourth grade we read this and we thought it was really nice you use this in a different way as an older kid but you can still do it as a read aloud to a younger kid without them doing any work behind it okay so here's where i kind of crossed out what i didn't want to cover there's some scripture here um, and i didn't need it so it kind of shows you how very little there is and really sticks to the science portion that I think everyone would be interested in. Also, they give you the keys too. I actually needed the key for a couple of things. <laughs> yeah, I needed the key for this. This was really fun. Determining the hardness of rocks. And then again, I got the, the next grade up. And I don't know if we'll use this again. I'm kind of starting to go in a different direction. I think we're doing a couple more, a few more of these. I will show you what they are. Um, if you haven't already seen my fifth grade curriculum video, I can run through like a real quick run through of them. But after the ones that we already have, I think for no reason, nothing against the good and the beautiful, we will probably start doing more in-depth like year-long science blocks of a type of subject. I want to start on physics or chemistry or something like that and just focus on that and then the next year do another thing. But in the meantime, we found this to be really, really fun. Very engaging, very short units that just have this neat way of cramming a ton of information in that we haven't forgotten. We still talk about this stuff. We still reference it. We still laugh that... Um, we we both got oh this was great we actually still have the jars in the kitchen <laughs> um we laughed that we both got some of the rock tests wrong and so um we were able to do a hypothesis of which one here we go we got this one wrong we thought schist was going to be the highest grade and in fact it's not so we all learned so i'm getting a fourth grade education for sure <laughs> and then here are the books they're not required to buy at all. They're additional, but I think their photography is really engaging and the writing is good and clear that it's great for kids of all levels and all interests. Let's see, what is this one? Oh, we spent a lot of time looking at this one. You don't even have to get this type of book. There's so many online. And if you already have that, have these or something like this, in your bookshelf, I mean, go to that, don't get another one. And we liked this little book. It kind of talks about what you do with minerals and where they're used. And I think also they had suggested we get, we pick up one of the DK books. So I just got this this is a pretty bad, it's in pretty bad shape, but I got this for just a couple of bucks on thrift books. Now I had these next ones to complete for the fourth grade. We just didn't do this one yet. And I don't think we will get to it in the fourth grade. It is useful. So I'll do a quick th flip through of it after, but this is the one that we did. We both really enjoyed. This was so much fun. <laughs> We like doing the games and the questions and building our own healthy food plate. And it's just really neat to see how kids come up with their plates. We picked up these books too, and we got this one as well. And I'm going to keep this health book. I will probably do this again in another couple of years. Then I got smart and realized I do not have to cut these out. 
<laughs> and then worry about losing them. I kept them in the book and photocopied them and we used them that way. So I kind of have the book intact now and I don't have to worry. By, he by this time, I actually didn't start crossing anything out that might have, I don't know, any sort of religious connotation to it. It, it just didn't bother me and I didn't think that it was, um, it altered any of the information in it. We did love these experiments. And a lot of these experiments are not busybody experiments. They really are fun. We, we did the kidney experiment and it was so interesting for both of us. And then matching it up. I am glad I picked up this book because we will keep this and do the health at least one more time. I mean, you could, you could technically do this every year. And then Morgan started with the grades three through six workbook. This one actually, we, you know, I, I think we have a pretty good IQ between the two of us and we couldn't figure out how to put this one together very well. So I just stapled it to the side. <laughs> Yeah, this was fun. Building your own healthy meal. What is, it's, it's really interesting to see everybody's idea of, of health. And then we built, based off of these things, we actually spent a few days building our own meals for dinner off of having, for example, a, a B12 dinner or a B6 dinner to see what, if we could just um, be really heavy in one of these vitamins or minerals. And that was kind of fun. And then this was a really interesting kidney experiment that we did. This hand thing, our, um, our school had done this a couple of times, so we didn't need to do it. So we skipped over that one. But I was surprised at how interesting and complicated this little thing, this little doodad was. And so we spent some time sitting and talking about our skin. And that was kind of neat. We got the matching books. And here's the one for facts about bones. And this one takes you through a cold and the life cycle of a cold and how people catch it. And then this is the reader. The reader is a nice level. I would say a fourth grader and up could read this themselves if they enjoyed reading a lot. And this one does have pictures intermittently. So it's really fun to watch, to observe and read along. Now, because the ones that we've already done are very light on religion, I just don't think that suddenly there's going to be something surprising in any of these. So this is the weather one that we had planned to do this year and didn't get to. And then we'll do, we're really wanting to do chemistry. I'm on the fence about marine biology. This is sort of a maybe nice to have, but this is also something that we don't ever have to let go. We can use it at any time that we want, I think up until and including eighth grade. So none of these, I don't think will go to waste. And we're definitely doing this one. So for sure the chemistry one and the motion and simple machines. And I really do want to get to weather because weather we find to be quite interesting up here since in North Dakota, it can be really strangely brutal and we're always talking about it but i guess everybody's always talking about weather aren't they and there's no difference in um plot or layout or anything with these at all the same with oh let's see what did i get this is grades three through six seven and eight and one of the we bought one of their books what i did notice with chemistry is they're usually grades, the workbooks are usually grades three through six and seven and eight. And the chemistry one is five through eight. So I didn't actually look to see if, if there were two books, but this one I would say is a little bit more complicated and maybe not the best for littler kids, but you could still do it as a group subject. Okay, so that was weather and motion and simple machines. We're really looking forward to doing this one. And it came with, and we got the story of invention and motion in sports, just because we like them. We like all of their photography and all of their quick explanations. They keep it fun. They keep it really, really focused on the subject matter. And that's kind of a, a that's a tipping point for me. There's some things, there's some history, there's some other subjects that add too much other stuff into 
uh, into and around the subject matter I'm trying to learn, and I don't notice that the good and the beautiful distracts me with that. And then this again, I think I told you guys, you can get for free online and flip through the entire thing if you want and download it for free. Um, the workbook for both of the kids comes for free as well, uh, but not these, which is fine because you can get anything like this out of your library or if you don't already have something lurking in one of your multiple bookshelves at home. But it's this chemistry that I'm really looking forward to. And because of that, we I don't think we're gonna cram jam this in to two weeks. We will probably extend it out and do one a day so that if we do this, for instance, Monday through Thursday, we'll take a good several weeks to cover everything in here and go through. Um, I think it's just some of the things are a little bit more complicated concepts. And maybe we will want to do uh, more in-depth or slower experiments. We'll want to maybe write it up, draw it up, write a hypothesis. And this is sort of, I'm using the good and the beautiful chemistry as a bridge towards more adult scientific thinking. And I think this is a very good book for it because it's still something that Morgan recognizes. She's done these before. She looks forward to them chemistry this level is a little bit more complicated and because of that it's going to I think move her into an upper category where then in the sixth grade because she'll do this in the fifth grade in the sixth grade we can move on to another style of curriculum not that I don't like these but at the sixth grade level what I think I would like to do is delve very deeply into a subject, perhaps starting with physics or again, chemistry. And then we got all of the readers. Got the kid readers, which are nice. Doesn't, I don't care who you are. I'm an adult and I love picture books. And we like the elements book. I, ne I didn't have one. And I thought that it would be nice to have a book where Morgan can flip directly to a nice colored picture of the elements and have them explained really well. And then we got the book on uh, Marie Curie, and this is an older book. There are no pictures to keep a kid pushing along to the next chapter. So you can really tell that this is beginning to be older science, older kid science. So if you're like me and you are looking for real focused science that was done in little blocks, like small units that you could pick and choose instead of buying one entire year's worth of chapter after chapter science that is sort of dictated to you at any given week, the Good and the Beautiful is an option. And in my opinion, it's an option for everyone, but like everything homeschool moms, it's up to you, it's your choice. And my video is only one of, I bet, many ways and resources that you will review and use to make your own decisions because you know what you're doing. <laughs> so see ya.